Hey everyone, Excalibur here, and I'm bringing you the third part of the tutorial series. I did say I was going to do sprinting in this tutorial, but for this one, I'm just going to be doing the fall height because it's a, it is a little more technical um, and it took a little longer to complete, but I want to have you guys add it in now, and sprinting will be the next tutorial. This will be a little bit shorter of a tutorial, um, but as you can see, I changed the level around a little bit, and now uh, the character falls from three different heights. A soft landing. These boxes will indicate how high up you need to be to land to do the different landings. So when you're th about this high up, you do a little bit harder of a landing. And when you are this high up, you do an even harder landing. The box all the way up here, this is going to indicate when I when the character will do the skydiving animations. When you're about this high up, you will do a drop, and then you will do the superhero landing that I have in the pack, but we do not set that up in this tutorial. For now, we're just going to be doing these other three tutorials, uh, other three landings. So let's get right into it. I'm um, inside of my project. Let's just go into my tutorial map, and we're going to expand the floor just so we have enough room to drop. Save that. And the first thing we want to do is adjust the animation blueprint. So go into AFL and in BP and we're going to be removing the jumping um, the jumping and the jump landing animations. So if you go inside of your locomotion um, state machine you have this setup as I do and what we want to do is inside the third person jump loop we want to replace this with our AFL fall idle animation so in the asset browser search for AFL fall drag it in and then just connect these two and we can get rid of that and what I like to do is I like to rename this to the actual name of the animation just so it is a little clearer and we will remove this third person jump and we do not need that one um, in a later tutorial I will be resetting up the third person animation set uh, animations for the jumping. Uh, in this tutorial it is not going to uh, work as it normally would. Uh, so by the end of this when your character does jump they will be using the last utilized landing animation. Um, I'll show you that at the end of the tutorial what it looks like. So we want to connect AFL fall idle and we want to connect the flight locomotion to the fall idle as well. So inside of the uh, fall idle to the third person idle run, what we want to set this, the, the variables of is and error, we will be setting, we will be checking to see if this is not true. And if it's not true, then we will be able to play our landing animation, which will be decided in the player blueprint. Same for the flight locomotion. We want to set this to is flying is not true. So if the character is not flying anymore, they can enter this transition. So when you press the F key while you're hovering, you will stop flying and you will go into the falling animation. The reason why I chose to change the animation, it'll just make everything smoother. Uh, so you don't have any jumping around of the character with different animations. So you can compile and save it. That's all we need right now for the flight animation blueprint. We will then be going to uh, make our landing montages. Um, so inside of the AFL BP folder, I'm going to be creating three different animation montages. So make sure you right click, do animation and animation montage, and you want to select the skeleton you are using, flight locomotion skeleton, and I'm going to name this to land soft. And you can do this two more times. Land medium and land hard. So we'll have three different landings. Uh, so we'll go inside the land soft and when inside here, uh, inside the asset browser, we will find AF, search AFL land and you see you have soft, medium and hard. So the soft, drag it right on the timeline. You can even preview it, what it looks like. It is just him landing. So when he's at a, a, a lower height, he will look like he's just setting back down onto the ground. Change the 
the default group to the full body, which we created in the aim offset tutorial. And that's all you need for this montage. Do the same for the medium and the hard. So search AFL land medium. Make sure you set the, deep, the uh, full body. And then go to hard and we'll just do AFL land hard. Okay. So that's all we need for the montages. Now we need to set up the player blueprint. This is the part that gets a little more technical. Um, it's not that difficult uh, once you figure the way around it. I'm going to comment this and do event tick. Just so a little, a little neater so I know where the event ticks are. So the first thing we need to do is create a variable, a float. And we're gonna call this floor distance because we need to calculate how far the floor is from when our character stops flying um, or is uh, begins falling walking off a ledge this will also work if your character steps off the ledge as well so if you jump off a building you can then have these different landings all right so we're going to find some open space and we need to create our event on landed And the first thing we need to do is disable disable all input. So when our character is playing the landing animation, the input, you won't be able to be sliding him around and moving him around. And from the on hit, the surface that we hit, we want to make sure that it is walkable. If the surface is not walkable, such as water, um, so consider the surface is water. That would be is swimmable. And that means if you have it where it is swimmable, you can have a diving animation for your character. Uh, for this, if the ground is walkable, we want to be able to land. So we need to do a branch and check the uh, surface that we're landing on to make sure it is walkable. And if that is true, we're going to be setting our floor distance, which we will then use to calculate which um, landing animation to do. So event, so find the event, event on walking off the ledge. This is what we use to get the previous location of the character from how high up they are jumping. So we want to break this and we need the Z, the Z float, the Z um, axis variable. We need to know how high up they are. Um, so if we take that, just do a float minus a float. And the other float that we need is the actor's current location. And we will break this as well and take the Z value. So what this is, is when the character lands and hits the ground, they take the previous location from when they walked off the edge and started falling, and we will get their current location when they hit the ground, and it will calculate immediately. And this value we will set to the floor distance. Now that we have our floor distance variable, we need to check and see how big it is. So do a float greater than a float. So if it's greater than, I chose 500, and 1,000. Uh, you can choose any different variables you want, uh, any different uh, values that you want to set, to check and see what the floor distance variable is. And we want to set into another branch. And you want to connect this to the first one. We want to check and see if it is greater than 500 first. Yeah, make sure you connect the variable to the first spot because we want to see if the floor distance itself is greater than 1,000. We don't want to worry about if 1,000 is greater than the floor distance. And we'll connect this to a branch as well. All right. 
So if it is true, if it is greater than 500, then we want to check and see if it is greater than 1,000. If it's false, we will be playing an animation montage. And if you back out to the animations and select each one as we go, so for the soft one, so if it is less than 500, uh, if we're less than 500 units from the ground, we will be playing our soft uh, landing animation. If it's greater than 500, but it's less than 1,000, we will be playing the medium landing animation. And if it is greater than 1,000, we will be playing our hard landing animation. Okay, so now that we have our animations playing when we hit the ground, we need to be able to re-enable our input. So, in fact, I can show you what would happen if you don't do disable input. So, I just disconnected disa um, disable input and connected the branch to the event on landed. And if you don't have that connected, you'll see what happens. So now we'll land. Now I can slide around when I land. We don't want that for our character. Instead, we want to be able to disable the input. However, if you play it now, when they land, can't move at all. So to fix this, you want to be able to enable input, but first, you want to set a delay. And the delay duration will be however long the animation montage is. So that means the character will be frozen until the animation finishes playing, and right when the animation finishes playing, we can move again. So we'll create three of those. And we'll just connect them. All right, so now that each one has a specific amount of delay, we will then enable our input again. So, so just search enable input. All right, that's all we need for the player blueprint. Just organize a little bit so it looks a little cleaner. And I'll just comment this as land from multiple heights. Compile and save. Now you can check this out and see how it works. So if you jump, you'll have the soft landing. If you fly in up to a certain height to about 500 units, that's why I had the cubes in the other map so I could know exactly how high up like 500 units and 1,000 units were. So you can check and see a little bit higher. Want to make sure that you get up to about 500, and then we got a hard landing. There we go. And there's our medium landing. So all three work. That is the end of this tutorial. It was a little bit shorter, uh, but I wanted to get this out of the way now, so you people can have, so you viewers can have your own setup for landing animations, you can use this for any different type of um, animation that you need. As I said, you can have it set up for swimming and diving. Um, you can even have it set up for uh, different types of falling, um, maybe some parkour. So if your character jumps from certain heights, you can have them do tumbles. Um, but the next tutorial, I will have sprinting set up. I have it um, started. I should have it finished in a little less than a week. So. You can expect the video up by Monday next week, hopefully. So, see you later.